Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Alpharetta Symphony's Chat with the Conductor podcast. I'm your host and music director, Grant Gilman. In this episode, we will trek through the mind and life of the one and only Beethoven, discover some of his life and inspiration, and how he came to compose the most recognizable piece of music in the history of the world, his Symphony No. 5. In order to give some context, I'm actually going to start earlier with Beethoven's third symphony, the Eroica, or Heroic, composed in 1804. You must understand that Beethoven over his life stayed current with politics, news, and the ever-developing philosophies of the world. The French Revolution had not only upended France, it threw ideologies of independence all over the world, creating an uproar of revolt from everyday people against any and all monarchies. Beethoven fully embraced this philosophy, became a full Bonaparte convert, and dedicated his heroic symphony to the little corporal himself. But then, as happens so often in history, people disappoint us. After all his drum beating a revolution, independence from overriding powers, yada, 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 what does Bonaparte do? Declares himself one of those tyrannical people himself, crowning himself emperor in 1804, just when Beethoven was finishing his third symphony. So the story goes, Beethoven was so angry, he rubbed so hard at the title page to remove his dedication to this traitor, threw away the slow movement, and replaced it with a funeral march in memoriam of the hero he once knew as Napoleon Bonaparte. Well, by the time Beethoven came to write his legendary Fifth Symphony, not four years later, he had hardened to the world in more than one way. While he had already long started to lose his hearing, it was almost completely gone by this point, isolating him from most of the world and, most depressingly, the very music that fueled his existence. While he, like all composers, could hear sounds in his own mind without actually producing them out loud, Beethoven would still attempt to channel the real world music by banging out the melodies and chords on a piano with his ear and head pressed against it, giving him the vibrations as a kind of, of assist. This would be maddening for any normal person to have so much to say but no way to actually hear it. All the while, your former idol is on the march across Europe, disrupting the lives of many millions of people, just another reminder of the perils when praising a fallible human being. In a way, we can see much of this in Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The hammering quality of the first movement, that four-note motive showing up all over the symphony, relentlessly pounding to almost no end. Even in the slow movement, Beethoven rarely lets the moment rest or feel settled. there is almost a joyous anger at first in the horns and later a fugue that starts in low strings. Even in the last movement that begins so strong and empowering Beethoven won't stay in that vein long and still goes to strained places. In the end, Beethoven can be interpreted as his own heroic figure, 
overcoming his deafness, Napoleon, all that he struggled with to finally, but only at the very end, actually be victorious. To be clear, these are all interpretive observations. Another listener may hear the same sounds, characters, music, and describe a different story just as valid as my offering. However, there is no doubt this piece is powerful, attention-grabbing, evocative, and unforgettable. Don't miss the Alpharetta Symphony's performance of this War Horse of the Orchestral Repertoire, November 3rd, 8 p.m. at Alpharetta United Methodist Church. Tickets on sale now at alpharettasymphony.org.